Reddit silverbacks are, are making a move in that direction. They're, they're gobbling up all kinds of physical silver. Unprecedented silver demand and loss of confidence in the currency are what will eventually, I think, end this uh, price suppression scheme. Hi, I'm Kaiser Johnson with Liberty and Finance, letting you know that as brokers for Miles Franklin, we can help you secure your future with precious metals for personal delivery, vault storage, or your IRA. With some of the best prices in the industry and privacy, security, and personal service that no one else can match. Our number for all orders and questions is 1-888-81-LIBERTY. That's 1-888-815-4237. We're available after hours and on weekends, and we look forward to speaking with you. Hey everyone, this is Elijah K. Johnson with Liberty and Finance. And with us today, a new guest, Stuart Englert, the author of Rigged, Exposing the Largest Financial Fraud in History. It's a book that's out about precious metal manipulation. And we definitely like to dig into that, what the evidence is for precious metal manipulation for b both gold and silver. But first, I'd like to get your take on the recent price action we've seen in precious metals. The recent price action is pretty much more more of the same uh, what I've been seeing the last uh, 14 or 15 years. Uh, the massive paper trades in the, in the future market uh, continue to dictate and suppress the spot price. And uh, this is despite uh, strong physical demand and declining vault inventory. Uh, if gold and silver reflected growth in the money supply and overall inflation, uh, the prices prices would be much higher. Uh, these record high premiums we're seeing in the retail uh, market, I think, are in indicative of that. Um, I've been checking the uh, the uh, premium prices over at the U.S. Mint website. I don't know if you've looked at those lately, but uh, a one ounce uh, uncirculated gold American Eagle, uh, they've got priced at twenty five hundred dollars. Um, and that's much, much higher than the spot price. Um, and those are in very limited quantities. And then we also have the uh, one ounce American Silver Eagle uh, that they're selling for $67 or a proof for $73, but they don't even have any in stock. So, and what do we see today? A spot price of about $19. So I don't know if the the U.S. Mint is, is gouging, attempting to gouge people, but they'd have to have some supply. In, in order to get those premiums. And by the way, those coins are legal tender here in the United States. But it, who in their right mind would go to use one of those coins to buy gasoline or groceries? Because their face value of $1 and, and $50 respect, respectively um, wouldn't buy you very much. Um, but I think it, the obvious goal is to keep gold and silver as, as collectibles, if you will, and not allow them to be used as, as constitutional money. I don't know if that answered your question, but uh, those are some of my thoughts. Yeah, I mean, I know with respect to the U.S. Mint, they don't really sell except for collectible coins to the general public. And and if you look at, you know, some of the dealers out there who are selling, for example, Miles Franklin, we're looking at still about 200 or more on the $200 premium or more on the gold eagles. And then, you know, it's 16 17 for the silver eagles. So you're still looking at a almost 100% um, premium on those silver eagle coins there. So that is very uh, telling, I guess, where the supply is right now. We are seeing lower premiums on uh, some other products like the bars um, and especially thousand ounce bars. But still, it seems like availability is drying up. A lot of the wholesalers are running out of silver uh, very quickly. We just got notice uh, last week, I believe, or, or the week before that one of the major uh, one of the biggest wholesalers in the U.S. was almost completely wiped out of product. Since we got that notice, it's even gotten more dire. Um, so your perspective on you mentioned the paper market. Um, so what distinguishes the paper market, the futures market from the physical, um, from actually people who are looking to purchase physical silver? Well, to me, the, the paper market is not a true price. Um, it's the physical market that should dictate the price. But all of these paper contracts uh, that are sold back and forth, you know, 
they're they're dictating the price in the spot market, but it, it's not reflective of what's going on in the physical market. And you're very well aware of that. And these these premiums indicate what the true price should be. And and what the point I was trying to make is the U.S. Mint's prices probably are more reflective of what the price should be. I did want to get more into how precious metals are manipulated in your view and actually suppressed. Um, so how what is the mechanism behind that? Well, th- there's there's several mechanisms, I guess you could say, and they're very convoluted, <laughs> um, to say the least. Uh, I guess to know for sure, we'd have to get some straight answers from the central banks and the bullion banks. But in short, uh, price manipulation is a is a paper shuffle involving uh, leases and swaps of metals in very vast quantities. And these vast quantities of imaginary gold and silver are bet on in the in the futures market and trading this uh, imaginary metal in large volume allows the uh, the traders to suppress the price. I sent a document to you, if you wouldn't mind uh, pulling that up or or posting it. But this is an explanation. from the International Monetary Fund of how gold swaps work. And what it says is gold swaps are typically undertaken when the cash taking monetary authority has need of foreign exchange or foreign currency, but does not wish to sell outright its gold holdings. In that manner, gold is a leveraging device. So that, that's what's happening. No gold is trading hands, but it's being leased or swapped as a leveraging device. And this is what the mechanism that is used to trade these, this large amount, to create and trade this large amount of derivatives. You know, that is said often that the amount of uh, paper traded is way more than the actual physical underlying it. But isn't that the case also? How does that differ from like other uh, other commodities traded on the futures market, for example, like wheat or coffee or anything like that? How how is the precious metal market different than that? I, I'm not a commodities trader, so I can't tell you. I can tell you just what I've researched in the gold and silver market. But when you trade as many contracts in one day as as the gold and silver produced in a year, it tells me that you can suppress suppress the prices just through this volume trading. They start out with these swaps and le- uh, leases, leverage it up, okay? They build a, a, a financial derivatives pyramid, if you will. And then they trade all of this imaginary gold back and forth and back and forth. And they can move the market any way they want uh, with these this huge volume trading. In addition to that, um, we have a practice, an illegal trading practice known as spoofing. And that is, that, that is when traders uh, place bogus uh, buy and sell orders to manipulate the price and make a profit. And we saw that we saw that recently. There were some JP Morgan traders uh, that were convicted of that. So when it comes to hard evidence, I know there's a lot of skepticism out there about, you know, is there actually evidence for precious metal uh, price suppression? So your perspective on that, what is the hard evidence that people can look up right now um, online or wherever uh, to show that precious metal prices are suppressed? Well, there are a lot of examples in my book, but I, I think one of the best uh, was the remarks of Federal Reserve Chairman uh, former Federal Reserve Chairman Ellen Greenspan, uh, he testified before the House uh, House Banking Committee in 1998 uh, when he opposed regulation of the financial derivatives that are used to uh, control uh, the metal prices. And here's what he said. He said, central banks stand ready to lease gold in increasing quantities should the price rise. Now, to me, that's a direct admission of gold leasing by central banks to suppress the gold price. But let's let's unpack the quote. OK, first of all, he used central banks in the plural. So he was suggesting that more than just the Federal Reserve 
is is leasing gold. He was talking about, I think, other central banks as well that are involved in this suppression scheme. Okay, and there's documentation of that. Okay, Uh, the other thing that he said is they're ready to lease gold. Now, why would a central bank lease gold? Okay. Well, he's he told us. He said if the price rises. So that right there is indicative that the central banks are intentionally trying to hold down the gold price. And I think the same for silver. Um, the other thing that he said is that he didn't want these financial derivatives regulated in his in his testimony. And that's precisely how they rigged the price. So I think that one quote in itself is among the best evidence. And and this was said in a public hearing. Okay, this is not some secret thing that I'm sure that that the testimony is available on on YouTube somewhere. Um, In addition to that, we know that uh, J.P. Morgan admitted to manipulating precious metal markets, and they paid a whopping nine hundred and twenty million dollar penalty for it. And then just this last August, two J.P. Morgan metal traders were convicted of fraud and spoofing, which is illegal uh, trading of the metals between 2008 and 2016. And my understanding is as they've yet to be a sentence for those crimes. But I'd like to add another thing here, Elijah. You know, the the banks take a lot of heat um, uh, for manipulating the price. But none of this could happen unless the U.S. government allowed it, okay? The U.S. government and its regulatory agencies are allowing this price suppression to go on. It couldn't continue otherwise. You know, J.P. Morgan is the largest bank in the nation, but it's it's been convicted or admitted to five felonies for rigging various markets. There's, there's a lot more... Um, evidence of um, of price suppression and manipulation in my book and also on GATA's website. That's the Gold Antitrust Action Committee website. I think it's GATA.org. And that's where I got most of the information from my book or much of the information from my book. And then one final thing I, you might recall, um, I think it was early last year, uh, Rostin Benham, uh, who was acting uh, CFTC chairman at the time, uh, even was on was videotaped saying that um, the uh, silver futures market was tamped down last year when there's a was a huge rush on silver. That's not on my back I'm in my book because it's so new. But tell me this: Why would a regulator be uh, supporting the fact? that the silver market was, quote, tamped down. And that indicates to me that the price was held back, that it was the price was of silver was tamped down when there was a huge run on on the silver market. So those are a few uh, pieces of evidence that I think support uh, support the fact that the metal prices are uh, controlled, manipulated and suppressed. What we'll do is put the links into the description of the video so people can, you know, the truth speaks for itself. People can see all that in context. So we'll put also a Greenspan's quote there and also the CFTC regulator regarding the silver price movement uh, last year in the description of this video. Wonderful. I appreciate you doing that. And in, in the back of my book, I've got all these citations. They're called endnotes. And people can look up this evidence if they're skeptical. I was skeptical at one point, Elijah. That's why that's one of the reasons I wrote the book. I did want to ask you also, though, that it seems like, you know, that other markets are also being manipulated. I mean, if you look at what's happened to the stock market ever since the U.S. uh, Federal Reserve started QE, quantitative easing, we've just seen an explosive bubble, um, a huge bubble in the stock market there. Your perspective on how other markets are manipulated as well. Well, absolutely. Uh, Gold and silver is just one of the markets. Uh, that's manipulated. You know, the banks and uh, financial service companies have been fined uh, billions of dollars for manipulating uh, bond prices. 
and foreign exchange markets and interest rates. I mean, this this goes on. There's there's all kinds of records. This this is in the public record. You can read the news uh, and it goes back for decades. So I believe most of the financial markets are manipulated one way or another. And then what does that mean for people who are holding physical metal? Because it seems like if the prices are suppressed, then this is a fantastic opportunity to actually get your hands on the physical metal. Well, that's that's absolutely true. Uh, if you want to um, buy low and sell high and you believe that we're headed for higher prices, you're absolutely right. Uh, when the prices are low, that's that's the time to buy. And I think that begs the question is, do you think this manipulation can go on uh, indefinitely or will it eventually fail? And if so, how? All things, even great things come to an end. Ultimately, I believe the price suppression is going to end. Exactly when that is, you know, I don't have a clue. I didn't think that uh, the money magi magicians could keep this uh, scheme going on uh, as long as they have. I, th I thought it was going to implode back in 2012. I'm, I'm already 10 years off, if you will. Uh, but you've heard the phrase, uh, who owns the gold makes, makes the rules, right? Um, well, the central banks hold most of the gold, you know, about 36,000 tons of it. And they could at any time, uh, you know, peg, peg their currencies to gold. But, but there's another uh, way that the price suppression uh, scheme could fail. So what if those who uh, hold the silver make the rules? Imagine if strong hands would buy up and hold all the physical silver there is then that could uh, blow up the paper derivatives market. And that, that's, that's within the realm of possibilities. As you know, the uh, Reddit silverbacks are, are making a move in that direction. They're, they're gobbling up all kinds of physical silver. And uh, the question is, do they have deep enough pockets and uh, strong enough hands to hold on to that uh, metal? Um, Un unprecedented silver demand and loss of confidence in the currency are what will eventually, I think, end this uh, price suppression scheme. And what then is the price, the actual price you think is fair market value for both gold and silver? Whatever you sell it for. If you sell an ounce for American Eagle for $35, that's the price. As I mentioned earlier, if if the growth in the money supply and these uh, inflationary trends we're seeing were taken into account, the price would be much higher. And as people lose confidence in the U.S. dollar because it is losing purchasing power, that price should rise. The price that people are willing to pay for, for the physical silver. Every time somebody asks me about the price of silver, my mind goes back to um, going 3000 visiting a, a silver mine up in northern Idaho, okay? I visited uh, a silver mine and I went 3,000 uh, feet below the ground with uh, a group of workers and I saw the sweat and, the, and felt the heat and saw the hard labor and toil that it takes to extract the, uh, the rock that bears this silver. And I'm telling you, it's worth a lot more than $19 an ounce when you take that into consideration. And that's not taking into consideration all of the capital that must go into the equipment and the labor uh, and then the whole processing uh, of the metal so that you can get that silver round or silver coin. Um, so it should it should be multiples higher than it is. And that's why I come back to the the price on the U.S. Mint website, they're wanting $67 for an um, uncirculated American Silver Eagle. That sounds like a fair price to me. 
And one thing that is also very important is that silver is such an industrial metal. Industry needs silver. And industry can't, you know, just use futures contracts. They can't use paper silver. They actually need the physical metal to put in pretty much all electronics. And so many things out there require silver. So do you think also the just demand on the industrial side could be pushing the price up and possibly uh, have the manipulation fail? Absolutely. If if these manufacturers uh, get into the market and buy huge quantity quantities anticipating a price rise, absolutely they could uh, drive the price up. Um, but th- I think that's another reason why why price uh, silver prices and uh, and more so than gold are suppressed because if uh, silver prices go up, all of our gadgets, our phones, our computers, our electronics, solar panels, the, those prices would rise as well, indicating that, you know, drive, driving the inflation up. So I think that's another uh, motive for uh, keeping, a, keeping a lid on, on silver prices. All right. Well, Stuart, really appreciate your time today. Before we let you go, did you have any last thoughts for our viewers? And if people are interested in learning more about the evidence for precious metal price suppression, they can get your book. And and where can they get that? You can just search my name on uh, Amazon or any other online retailer. And the book Rigged, Exposing the Largest Financial Fraud in History is available in paperback and ebook. And I hope, uh, hope people do their due diligence and understand how the markets are rigged so that they can fight against them. To me, there's there's two reasons, primary reasons to own precious metals. Number one is for a wealth preserver, if you will, to preserve your wealth uh, should should the uh, dollar die or it lose its purchasing power. But the other reason is to do what the the silverbacks over at uh, subreddit Wall Street Silver are doing, and that is to dr- try to break the back of the banks and the gold's uh, price suppressors. I should have said silver price suppressors. I'm sorry. Yeah, no, and it, it's just a way to really get outside of the system as well, because it seems like everything in our life now is so digitized. Everything is, you know, online and stuff like that. But when you hold a piece of silver in your hand, it's like, wow, this is something outside of the system. This is something that's real. And I think that's important for people to get back to reality, um, to actually hold wealth outside the system. Cause we don't know if this system is going to last forever. Right. And it's definitely, there's a lot of vulnerabilities, a lot of third parties that we're relying on and, and to be able to hold something in your hand and to realize that, you know, my wealth is in my hand now, it's not in someone else's. That's right. Gold and silver have been money for a lot longer than our paper and digital currencies. And I think people need to need to keep that in mind. All right, Stuart. Well, it's been a very interesting conversation today. Thank you so much for sharing your insights. Um, And yeah, thank you so much and God bless. Same to you, Elijah. Thanks so much. Bye-bye. Miles Franklin Precious Metals is one of America's oldest and most trusted bullion dealers. Miles Franklin is A-plus rated and accredited by the Better Business Bureau, licensed and bonded, and has zero complaints ever registered. Here at Liberty and Finance, we are licensed brokers with Miles Franklin. To order, simply call us, discuss your needs, and we will let you know our live inventory, prices, and availability, and lock in your order over the phone. Once your order is locked, the price is held for you regardless of market fluctuations, and the metals are reserved for you awaiting your settled payment. Within one business day of ordering, you will receive an email invoice detailing the order and payment instructions. Miles Franklin accepts payments by bank wire, ACH or electronic check, money order, check mailed priority mail, and cryptocurrency. The fastest forms of payment are bank wire and cryptocurrency. Upon settled payment, metals will ship out within three to five business days. You will receive tracking information via email. Domestic shipping charges are $15 for any order under 500 ounces of silver or 10 ounces of gold. For orders larger than that, domestic shipping is free. The package will be double boxed, fully insured, and labeled discreetly, with no indication of the contents inside. For your privacy, the name Miles Franklin will not even be on the package. To talk to myself, Elijah, 
my brother Kaiser, or my father Dunnigan, call 1-888-81-LIBERTY. That's 1-888-815-4237.